In the last video, we saw some examples of vector spaces, namely Rn and the set of m by n matrices. Now we're going to look at some other examples of vector spaces. These are going to be vector spaces whose elements are real-valued functions. The first vector space that we're going to look at is the set of all functions, taking a real number and mapping it to some other real number. For such functions, we can define operations of addition and scalar multiplication. We define the sum of two real-valued functions, f and g, to be that function that on input x evaluates to f of x plus g of x. So this is our definition of addition of functions. We can also define scalar multiplication. For some real number c, the function c times f is that function that on input x evaluates to c times f of x. So again, c, uh, f of x here is just some real number. We multiply that real number by c, and that's what c times f evaluates to on input x. Let's go ahead and point out the zero element in the vector space of real valued functions. That's just going to be the constant zero function, the function that for every input x just evaluates to zero. So you can see that under our definition of addition, for any function f plus the constant zero function, that's just going to be equal to f itself. I'm actually not going to verify any of the other conditions to see that the set of all real valued functions is a vector space. Hopefully you got the, ver the flavor of these verifications in the previous examples. And if you feel so inclined, you can go ahead and check for yourself that this satisfies all the conditions to be a vector space. The next example that we're going to look at is the set of polynomials. This is also a set of real valued functions of a special form. A polynomial is a finite sum of the form a0 plus a1 times x plus a2 times x squared plus dot 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 plus a n times x to the power n. The degree of a polynomial is the largest d for which the coefficient of x to the power d is non-zero. So here, if say a n is not equal to zero, then the degree of this polynomial would be n. The constant zero function is kind of special. The constant zero function is a polynomial, just where all of the coefficients are zero. However, by the definition here, there is no coefficient that's non-zero, so the degree is not defined. So the zero function is a polynomial, it's called the zero polynomial, but it has no degree. We define addition of polynomials just like we did for addition of real valued functions. So the sum of polynomials p and q is that function which on input x evaluates to p of x plus q of x. And you can check that this is again going to be a polynomial. Scalar multiplication is also defined just as it was in the case of functions. c times p is that function which on input x evaluates to c times p of x. And you can check again that this is also going to be a polynomial. Finally, the zero element in the vector space of polynomials is just the constant zero function. As we said, that's a polynomial as well, the zero polynomial. I'm not going to go through all the other tedious checks to see that the set of all polynomials satisfies all the conditions for the vector to be a vector space, but it does, and you can verify that for yourself if you want to. Let's consider another vector space involving polynomials. That's the set of all polynomials of degree at most n. Now there's kind of a technicality here. We need to include the zero, the zero polynomial, even though we just said that that has no degree. So when I talk about the set of all polynomials of degree at most n, I'm always going to mean throw in the zero polynomial as well. We need the zero polynomial to be in there, otherwise we're not going to have a zero element. Let's just check why the set of polynomials of degree at most n is closed under the operations of addition and scalar multiplication. 
The point is that if we add two polynomials, we're not going to increase their degree. The same thing with scalar multiplication. Multiplying a polynomial by a scalar does not increase its degree. Therefore, the set of polynomials of degree at most n is closed under addition and scalar multiplication. And with this um, uh, note here that we include the zero polynomial, it also has a zero element. And again, you can check all the other tedious conditions that this is actually a vector space. The vector space of polynomials of degree at most n closely corresponds to the vector space r to the n plus 1. You see that a polynomial of degree at most n is completely determined by its coefficients a0, a1, a2, up to a n. So we can identify such polynomials with n plus 1 tuples of real numbers. And you can even see that if we add together two polynomials, say p of x that has coefficients a0, a1, up to a n, and q of x that has coefficients b0, b1, up to bn, then the sum of these two polynomials has coefficients a0 plus b0, a1 plus b1, etc. Therefore, the coefficients of the sum of the polynomials p and q is just the sum of their coefficient vectors if we treated these like vectors in Rn. Right, the first coordinate is a0 plus b0, the second coordinate is a1 plus b1, and the nth coordinate is a n plus b n. This is why studying the vector space r n is so important and why we started out with that, because we'll see that many other vector spaces behave a lot like r n. Just to check your understanding, let's consider a non-example, an example that's not a vector space. Consider the set of all polynomials of degree exactly equal to 2. Now this is not going to be a vector space. The reason, for example, is that this contains the polynomial x plus x squared. This is a polynomial of degree 2. It also contains the polynomial minus x squared. But if I add these two polynomials together, that's going to be the polynomial just x, and this is not a polynomial of degree 2. So this set is not closed under addition, and this is not a vector space. That's why it's important in the previous example that we included all polynomials of degree at most n. In this video, we've seen some examples of vector spaces involving functions. There's many other vector spaces involving functions that we can consider. I'll just mention a couple here. The first is functions with a restricted domain. So say we only consider functions defined on the interval from 0 to 1. We could also consider the set of functions that on 1 evaluate to 0. Again, it's very important that we choose 0 here and not some other number. If we chose some other number, then we'd rule out the constant 0 function. And then this actually would not be a vector space. We could also consider the set of continuous functions on some bounded interval. This is also going to be a vector space. The key thing to note here is that a, if you take a continuous function and add it with another continuous function, the result is still going to be a continuous function. And if you take a continuous function and multiply it by a scalar, the result is still a continuous function.